Hey guys, Montel here, and welcome to this edition of Free Thinking with Montel. You've probably had a chance to see my my first guest uh, several times, maybe, in different blockbuster movies or two, such as Venom and Alita, Battle Angel, or Mile 22. He's worked with legendary directors such as, over the years, such as Oliver Stone, Robert Rodriguez, James Cameron, to name just a few. He was born in Ho Chi Minh City from a Vietnamese mother and a Honduran Polynesian father. He represents the next generation of screenwriters and directors, and he joins us today to talk about his film, 22, The Unforgotten Soldier, which he wrote and directed. Sam Medina, thank you so much for joining us today on, on Free Thinking with Montel. Thank you, sir, for having me. It's an honor to be here with you and also speaking with you uh, after so many years watching your show before. So this my, is uh, such an honor personally for me as well. My goodness, my friend. Thank you so much. Now, before we get uh, started talking about you know this important film, why don't you tell us a little bit about your background? Where are you from? Where did you grow up? What did you go to school for? What, what, what was life like before you started, before you became a director? Uh, thank you. I was born in Vietnam. I came here uh, late 80s and went to school here and then just normal growing up, uh, doing regular work. Katrina hit. And so we all lost our jobs. I was a music producer back then. I moved back home to my family and we were just all trying to recover from Katrina and we didn't have any work. I started working as a construction worker. I was one of those guys outside, outside of Home Depot and Lowe's if you saw the news from New Orleans. And then I got sick uh, with uh, breathing all the mold. I asked God, the universe, uh, I hope I get an opportunity to do something else or I'm going to die. I jumped into the um, movie business, started out as an extra. I mean, get paid sometimes, sometimes you don't eat, uh, but you had to go pay dues. And that was 2005. Uh, and it's been a, a crazy but amazing blessing 18 years uh, to now um, to be in this business. That's incredible. You had an opportunity to work on some pretty incredible blockbuster kind of films. I mean, come on, my friend. I mean, being on Venom, then Alita Battle Angel, and I watched that. I, 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 I actually turned that in a couple of times. And uh, Mile 22, uh, all blockbuster films. Uh, what was that like? If it's all said and done today, sir, uh, I mean, I'm in heaven. Uh, to say that I came from Vietnam, where we didn't have enough food, no TV, no water, no bathroom, all the way to America, uh, this is the true land of opportunity. If you choose to work hard as you can, uh, it's amazing. It's just been my, my my testimony is what it is that I'm living through the American dream, what it's like to come from a third world country. My dad you know, used to pick fruits up in uh, Honduras. You know, We were in the rice field in Vietnam. So to come here and to even sit at this desk with you today, sir, mm. is a testimonial in itself of what life can be if you choose to work hard and persevere through you know, trials and tribulation and everything, sir. So you got the acting bug first. When did you get the writing and directing bug? The writing and directing bug came about eight years ago. Um, I was told by many colleagues that, look, you can't just act. You can't just be a one pony trick. So you need to know how to edit. You need to learn how to write. You need to learn how to direct. That way you can you know, diversify yourself. And coming from the producing side, when I used to produce rap music, I was always used to work with, act, with, with, with the, the rappers in the studios. So it came time with directing actors. And it started out with me just taping my friends for audition tapes. And it turned it into something where I, I saw a niche for myself and to be able to create and, and give others the opportunities that I have been blessed. I mean, these opportunities have bestowed on me and I wanna turn around. I wanna you know, go back down whatever little ladder that is and, and pull other hands up to, to also make sure they get the same opportunity, sir. Mm -hmm. And uh, why did you pick this subject matter, Mile 22, I'm not, not Mile 22, 22, The Unforgotten Solar, why did you pick that as a uh, subject matter for your first project? Um, here's the thing. My buddy Chuck, who's in the film, uh, he's actually a Vietnam War vet. And I've known him for 17 years now. And we started out when I first joined my first acting class uh, back in 2005. 
And every week he would tell me about his survivor's guilt, about what happened with him in Vietnam, about most of his buddies died in Vietnam. And I felt so compelled that, you know, I really want to be able to tell his story somehow and, and make it make sense to where there's a legacy that he can leave behind to his great-grandchildren, great-great-grandchildren. And then the film 22 came about because when COVID, um, you know, locked everything down, we, we were in Las Vegas and we came back to New Orleans and we didn't have a way to leave out of the house to actually make other films that I had uh, for my wife at the time. And so we, we literally did everything mostly in our house. And the subject matters to me because I feel that, you know, for me and so many other Americans, that we can live our life on a daily basis while someone else picked up a gun and protect this country. This is one time that I want to give back to the country, to the men and women who sacrifice everything that they can do for us. And that's what compelled me to, to do this story and to actually, when I started diving into the 22 average veterans a day that commit suicide, that's what really compelled me to bring out the story and not just, not just the story, not just the push-ups, right? We want to go a little bit further to where we want to be able to create a, a platform, a situation to where other veterans can, you know, they don't have to be in front of the camera. They can be behind the camera. They can learn a new trade. And as many sets that I have been on, usually it, it just only one veteran, maybe with uh, with uh, some form of, you know, disabled. And, and, and there's just one. And then so many hundreds of thousands of others do not get an opportunity. And wanted to do this to give things back but also to create a way that we can hire more veterans um, to do these kind of things that way it gets them away from being inside the house and learn a new trade and maybe see new opportunities sir absolutely and let's talk about the film itself though again it, it 22 back when you actually wrote it and and directed it and produced it you know that was the number that, of what we used all the time in the news and I think right now we know that the number is probably more like 26 a day. Uh, the number's not gone down. It's gone up. Um, but tell me a little bit about 22, The Unforgotten Soldier. And you were trying to, throughout the entire film, and I watched part, I watched almost all of it and watched it. I, I tried to watch it last night. And unfortunately, I, I uh, got to it late. So I, I went to sleep. I'm going to finish it today. Um, but you, you have a really dynamic relationship with a current veteran and a Vietnam veteran and a Vietnam veteran trying to help the current veteran deal with significant loss in his life. I mean, you know, loss in his life of his limbs and the injuries that he suffered, but also just being able to cope with the reality of being a disabled veteran. We'll talk about the story a little bit. Yes, sir. So I, when we started this journey, I was talking to so many veterans and quite a few when I see you know, there's a there's a situation to where some are in the wheelchair, some are in, um, you know, are not able to walk straight, and that really touched my heart to put myself in that situation. What would happen if I picked up a gun and went and and defended the country, and when I came back home, this is what I was left with, and from that goal as far as the imagination started expanding out. And then we started talking to a lot of veterans, uh, the veteran trash talk gentlemen, uh, Chuck, his buddy, Irwin, uh, Ignatius, everybody combined. And when I first wrote the, the, the opening scene of the film, I imagine what it's like when someone has nothing else to live. And really I mirrored those experiences because at the time I was going through some really, really life-changing experience for myself, sir. You know, my mother was um, laying in the hospital, doesn't look like she's gonna make it, two strokes. Uh, and I was going through my own depression at the time. And I channeled that depression to what it's like, because at times I definitely thought about suicide. At times I thought about what is there left for me to do when I don't have the person that has been everything for, to me. Um, and from that, that came out into the film the way it is. I felt that a lot of the 
pain and suffering I was going through, I mirrored it with a lot of veterans that I talked to to see what it's like. How how is it that you can survive from daily life struggles? And then of course you add on top of what Chuck had taught me over the years, what it's like to have survivor's guilt and what it's like to to you know be the one who's sitting here and and question why am I still alive? And I think that for for Chuck, he inspired me in these particular all of these scenes that you see because he sent me so many emails over the years of what he felt like emotionally, mentally, uh, what was going through his mind. And I just mirror what is like what me and him as our, as our friendship and how that formed. And so that's 22 came out that way. But the, the veterans that are in the actual uh, therapy session, it's funny because those gentlemen invited me on their podcast and I told them, I said, look, I have a, a spot in the film where we want to talk to veterans. Cause I, I felt that all of the film that touches on PTSD, the soldier or the veteran only go to therapy, maybe 30 seconds to a minute in the film. And I felt like usually when I have talked to all of these guys, it is a daily, you know, occurrence for them. It's not something that you can just go one minute, it's gone. And so they say, hey, look, man, you know, you want to, you want us to do this? They actually offer uh, their time, their effort. I mean, they flew in on their own down to be a part of the film. And I told them, I said, look, I don't want to write this part. I feel like I want veterans to be a part of this because I believe if the true veterans that are in this, it can also validate to other veterans what it is that we do in this film to, to bring the situation to light and also continue the journey to do something about it and not just be done uh, with the film when it's done. Um, the, the film is made the way it's made also because I've spoken to so many producers and other people that I work with in the, in, in, in the industry and they didn't want to do the film like how we wanted to do. Until they wanted to do it where it's a little bit more glamorized of what it's like at the end of at, at the tunnel. And I felt that, you know, there's no white picket fence, sir. I mean, just my per perception. There's no white picket fence at the end of the day for our veterans. I think that, you know, I can I can step away from this 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 film, but then the next moment, a veteran that's in the film with me or watching the film, they are still living whatever it is that they live in in their mind, no matter what. And so that's why we did it with, you know, no studio hope or anything like that. It's all on our own by veterans for veterans, sir. Excellent. Excellent. What do you want to achieve with this film? You want to, I know you want to have something that resonates with other veterans and make them understand that there is, like you just said, you didn't want to do the white picket fence, but you do want to make them understand that through help and relationships and talking it out and understanding what they went through and understanding there's others who are like them that have gone through the same thing, that there is some hope and there is some survivability in that and there's some resilience in that. I mean, what were you trying to achieve? So what we wanted to do is we we took the film and we, we showed it to 10 veterans in a very small room and everyone broke down and cried and at the end they hugged and, you know, they started a conversation some veterans said to others, hey, you know, I wish I, I knew about these kind of things because um, one of the gentlemen, he said, look, my buddy came down to say goodbye to me and I didn't know. And then when he went back to, 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 to upstate, he committed suicide. Mm -hmm. And so I need to know about these things. Soldiers and veterans need to watch these to understand what it's like and to prepare themselves. And when we saw that, we, we said to ourselves, okay, this is one of the one of the goals is to also take the film. We're looking for some sponsorship to where we want to go, maybe start small with three, four states and go to the different VA office or the American Legion and show the films and invite our veterans to come watch the film and share their experience and start the dialogue that way. That way, I believe that going to those outreach, you know, one place at a time with the veterans in the film. I want to make sure that I can come and talk to whoever they need to talk to me, but I'd rather them talk to the veterans that are in the film. And we start that way, just being on their little, you know, promotional tool in that sense, and then see where that go. That is one of our goals. The other is to, you know, make whatever little money we can 
put that away and also make sure we donate it to, to, to charities that really help veterans. And as I grow as a writer and director, so I'm, I have some TV series that I am penning to also make sure we hire more veterans and gotcha. these heroes. Yeah, well, you know, making a film like this as a first time director is not easy. I mean, for you, what was the process like? I mean, you had you had, clearly you picked up notes from being on other films and all of the projects and working on other projects. You kind of understood the flow. But uh, let's go back to the beginning. I mean, when you first decided to, to tackle this from a budget standpoint, was this out of pocket? Did you raise some funds? I mean, let's talk a little bit about the whole process. Yes, sir. So we we started out um, in the uh, Indiegogo campaign and, um, you know, we got twelve thousand dollars and me and my wife said you know what let's just shoot what we can and see where it goes maybe it become a short film maybe it's a proof of concept and we go further and as i i didn't want to do it the way how my friends who are producing do it so we had no budget uh thankfully uh a gentleman uh named michael halverson uh, a great businessman out of uh, las vegas and he loves mile 22 and he's the one that came in for the rest of the, the the money to make the film itself we started out as just a camera test and see where it goes um we shot it for a good you know amount of days and then the the flashback scene we were able to do it out in las vegas at uh battlefield las vegas the journey of making the film <laughs> we had four four persons Montel. Uh, usually, you know, so many crew on your show and other people, but we didn't have a choice. Uh, I be, I felt that we were against the wall and we didn't want to crumble. And I find that life is always a test and, and you're always being tested. And we said, OK, well, let's see what we can do. So there was just four people. A lot of lean and mean, lean and mean with four people, boy. <laughs> yes. And so a lot of times when I have to direct the other actors, I literally would lay in my spot and would have to watch a monitor, but then watch their performance, but then also be emotionally available for them so they can react to me. Uh, and my poor wife, uh, she was the actor in it, the producer. She handled all the things inside the office uh, to pay people to drive and you name it. We, we did it all. But through, through it all, we, we learned something about ourselves that, you know, it's definitely a cliche, but if you really put your mind into it, you can do it. And two and a half years later, sir, here we are. I mean, really honored to even, you know, speak to you about it. And, and, and we knew we could do the creative part. We reach out to you and your company because we feel we can do things to a certain point, but then we need other people that, are, that, that, that have a bigger platform to really bring it out there even further as, as a ship, as a guidance for us to be able to deliver this message out there even more so. Well, right now you can see it on Prime Video. Is that right? Where else can you see it? You can see it on Tubi too as well. There are more platforms uh, being added uh, soon. Usually it takes a little while. And even with even with that situation itself, the distribution process, it was tough because a lot of studios, they didn't want to deal with this kind of film. And and, and so, bad. yeah, we, we looked at it and we say, look, we don't want to just give it away because I think we're, we're not doing any justice to our veterans, to everyone who, who have been involved in this film. So we sat back on it and we studied the market for a year and a half and we decided to to use a different platform to distribute it to where we own the rights to the film. So if let's say another company that actually are really proud to have a, a, a film for veterans, they they can take over it and bring it in even to a bigger platform, sir. Great. And what's been, and you said the reaction has been great from the veterans, but what's been the reaction from the civilian population? Well, the civilian population had no idea what some of the thoughts that are going that, that goes through our veterans mind uh from from the vietnam war all the way to to the current uh situation and the audience were in awe some of our colleagues would text these veterans that are in the film and say hey man that's deep man like i didn't know you were having those thoughts like that at night so i think that from the audience standpoint it is a different point of view that they have never been able to reach inside 
of our veterans' mind. Yes, if you know, you you know, you see an A-lister, you're like, oh yeah, that's the A-lister. He did a great job acting, but at the end of the day, there's still a perception of this is an a A-lister who's you know acting it out, and I'm sure he's doing a great job. I think the difference is what we did with this film is that a lot of these veterans share their stories from their heart, and it is a different feel for the film. Got it, got it. And again, one more time, how can people watch it right now? You can go up on Prime. That's what I did last night. I went over Prime and I read it. Um, where else can they see it? They can see it also at Tubi, on Tubi right now, uh, free on Tubi. You know, there's some some ads in it, but it's free on Tubi and Amazon Prime is there. We try to work with uh, Amazon Prime right now to have it to where the film can be free to the public as part, part of the subscription. So I think that they wanted to do some business transaction first. That's why you have to rent it or, or buy it. And then I believe later on, they're gonna turn it to where it's part of the Amazon Prime or, you know, uh, uh, package. That way you don't have to pay. Oh, that's great. And what's your, are you working on any other projects now? Or are you just trying to get out here and promote this and make sure people get an opportunity to see it? We're, we're doing both. So we're promoting this at the same time we are shooting the next action film uh, star and call us Seneca, my wife, boss, um, producer, because when we decide to do 22, we we have her take a step back for three years for her film because I have written four films for her. And so now it's her turn, but we're promoting this. Uh, but we're still in talk with our veterans buddies who will come on to guide because it's it's got a lot of special force and a lot of elements of military uh, in the background of this next film. So they are part of, uh, of us as far as the, 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 the consultants wise, because my wife is also, she was, um, uh, the French, she's in the French Navy. She was in the Kosovo war and she plays the therapist in the film. She plays Maddie in the film as well. So mm -hmm. we definitely are working towards more things because working on this more and bringing it out forefront more, it gives us the opportunity to make certain production deals with bigger studios. And therefore, when we get these production deals, we can turn around and we can hire our veterans as well to be uh, part of the team. Absolutely. Anything else you want to share? Um, thank you for, 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 for having us on here. We appreciate everyone's help. Uh, like I said, we can only do us, you know, so much, and we just appreciate you and your team and anyone else who come along and give us just a platform to speak about. We're getting ready to do quite a few uh, TV station interviews and some podcasts and, and radio too as well. So you're the first one, which is for me, sir, is, is so awesome. Cause like I said, I'm speaking to Montel. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I thank you. No, come on, my friend. I thank you. And, I, and I thank you for doing the movie because I think you know, I, I work very, very seriously. <laughs> And very closely with uh, some protocols right now. One protocol in particular that is considered a cure for PTSD. So, you know, we'll share that information with you and that down the road if that's something that, that interests you as a project. One second. Jackpot. If that's something that interests you as a project, I can get you some information about it because, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a you know, unfortunately, and I've been told by lots of different, uh, doctors and people that, you know, anything transformative in the medical world is normally met with the most vehement and adamant resistance, especially if, you know, it may take away some um, things that people have been working on the wrong way for quite a while. So there is really right now and has existed for about 10 years in this country, a protocol that has now been validated as evidentiary medicine and has been validated by the governing bodies of you know, psychological protocols as the only cure for PTSD, and yet no one knows about it. So something that I'm going to be working on um, uh, hard over the next couple of years because, you know, a lot of the, the, what you talked about in the film, you know, we have ways to help soldiers deal with it better. Um, literally, there's a protocol out there that right now in five to 10 hours, you can remit almost all symptoms of PTSD, just like that. Five to 10 hours, no medication whatsoever. So we're not drugging people. We're just literally working to help free their minds and free them of, you know, the pains that they went through, you know, serving us. And um, so, you know, for the veterans that you work with out there, you let them know that there's a protocol out there. It's called RTM, Reconsolidation of Traumatic Memories. Um, they can just look it up online and there is a way for them to actually 
relieve their symptoms of PTSD. They don't have to do it in person. It can be done virtually. So it's really absolutely amazing. So, you know, um, I applaud you for what you're doing because, you know, it's no longer time for us to just say thank you for your service. It's time for us to do something about it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you're, doing, and you're doing something about it. Thank you. And yes, I, I would love to have the opportunity to to hear more about it. If there's a way that I can be a part of it, sir, you count me in. Once again, I feel that even with you, thank you for your service, but you're right. I didn't want to just do the 22 push up. I wanted to come out here and make a difference as, as a citizen of, of, of the United States, as a person who came here as an immigrant and, 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 and uh, you know, got my green card and, and uh, you know, took a test and now I'm a citizen. I just, just like, you know, uh, Jocko Willing says, you know, um, you know, don't just thank us for the service, but live a life that is worth protected. And that's, you know, what I want to do and that's what we'll continue to do. So anything that I can do on my behalf from this day on to the future or near future, I am super happy to be part of the team, whatever it is that we need to bring it out there. Because I feel like I'm able to be in Hollywood, you know, a kid from Vietnam, go to Hollywood to make a film to honor a veteran that's also from the Vietnam War. I'm honored for that and anything that I can do to be a part of the team, sir, you just count me in. Okay, sir, for sure. We'll reach back out to you and let you know. And again, the movie is called 22, The Unforgotten Soldier. You can find it on Amazon Prime. And was the other? Well, that Tubi. Tubi? Yes, Tubi. Tubi. So you can find it there. So make sure you do that. Go out, reach out and see if you can see Sam Medina's film. And we're looking forward to seeing many more films from you, my friend. Thank you so much, sir. It's an honor to speak with you. And I hope that this will be the beginning of a working relationship with us and, and your team and any things that we can help to do for our veterans, anything else that uh, we can contribute. Thank you, sir. Will you stay well and make sure you tune in to the next Free Thinking with Montel. Thanks for joining me on Free Thinking with Montel. Please make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell to be notified when new episodes post each week. We'd love to hear your feedback, so please send us your comments. Thank you.